everybody for coming. Um, I want to start off by introducing uh, the finance team for the House of Representatives. Uh, we have the Chair Ken Weiler of uh, Finance, Vice Chair Lynn Lynn Ober. Uh, we have uh, one of our division chairs here, Bill Belvin. Uh, we have our Ways and Means Chair here, Steve Stepanek. Right behind. And um, Norm Major, unfortunately, is uh, not well today. And uh, rounding out the finance team is uh, Representative uh, Bettenford, who's the majority leader, and Representative Tucker is the uh, deputy speaker. These leaders have been working, in some cases, since early in, uh, in, in December, in some cases since late November, on revenue and budget issues. They were joined by roughly 40 additional representatives after Organization Day on December 1st and have been looking at revenues and spending for the state. Uh, throughout the last year, as I traveled across the state, speaking to the people of New Hampshire about the budget and the need to restore fiscal discipline, I received one consistent message from them. They want us to budget the way they do. They want us to budget by saying, how much money do I have to spend? And then not spending beyond that amount. We have taken a great deal of time to make sure that when we answer that first question, how much money do we have to spend, that it is accurate. Unfortunately, that process has not, in, in recent memory, been followed in Congress. The legislature too often has flipped the process on its head. It first determines how much it wants to spend, and then every cycle increases the burden on the taxpayers of the state to cover that spending. As many of you know, we now have the results of that, a budget deficit that in structural terms seems to be approaching a billion dollars. This simply cannot continue. This will not continue. Think about what that kind of money means to the people and the families of New Hampshire. For every individual, if we were to try to increase, to cover that deficit by increasing taxes and fees, it'd be $750. It would be $3,000 for every family of four in New Hampshire. We can no longer go back to our families and say, pay for this kind of overspending. We are going to bring common sense budgeting back to Concord. We have been pursuing it for the last two months, and we want to tell you where we are because we've made significant progress. We are here to tell you today about what the revenues will be based upon the same disciplined look at the figures that we have uh, engaged in in prior years as, uh, as Republicans. Um, we are going to uh, tell you where the revenues are, and then we're going to budget according to those revenues. And we're going to start to make a down payment to the people of New Hampshire, uh, reducing the overspending of past years. There have been, as we know, over 100 new or increased taxes and fees over the last four years. Our budget when we now turn to the spending side, will accommodate uh, reductions in taxes and fees. We're going to, it includes the repeal of a $30 car registration fee hike. It eliminates the gambling winnings tax. It reduces the inspection sticker fees. It repeals the vital record in, uh, fee increases. It repeals a fee increase on builders. It repeals the meals and room renewal fee. It reduces license fees for pet stores and reduces the marriage license fee. This, these are reductions that make sense and they will tell the business community and the people of New Hampshire 
where we're going. It's a good faith start, and we hope that to the extent that revenues projections look better, that we can increasingly fund other reductions or do what should have been done over the years, put money into the rainy day fund. The commitment we make to the people of New Hampshire, however, is that if revenue projections get any better as we progress towards the final budget being passed, that those projections will not be put as in prior years into increased spending, but they will be put into investments in the rainy day fund or increased uh, reductions in fee and taxes. This is in response to the message that the people of New Hampshire gave us last November. They do not want new taxes. They do not want new fees. They want budgeting that reflects the common sense that they bring to their everyday lives and the way they make their financial decisions. So I want to thank uh, Chairman uh, Stepanek and Vice Chairman Norm Major for the hard work that they've put forward in, in coming up with these figures. Um, and, and, we, and the fact that they have put that hard work in and given the history they've had in the past, we all can have great confidence in the accuracy of these figures. We will find that as we finish out the next budget biennium two years from now, that these figures will be the closest that anyone had as an estimate. I also want to thank, uh, on behalf of, uh, of the leadership of the House and our caucus, Finance Chairman Weiler and Vice Chairman Over and their three division heads, Joe Belvin, Neil, Will Smith, and Neil Kirk, for their commitment to live within these estimates. The taxpayers owe them and a, a debt of gratitude for the work that they have put in and the hard work that they are uh, now uh, taking on to complete this commitment that were made to the people of New Hampshire. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to turn this over to uh, DJ Bettencourt, the majority leader. Thank you. Speaker. It is with a great deal of pleasure that I stand before you this afternoon as Republicans with the knowledge that today, February 3rd, we know exactly how much money the House budget will spend. We also know, importantly, that our revenue numbers, which are the foundation of that budget, are real and solid. But today is just another step in a process that actually began early last summer when Republicans campaigned across the state on a platform of less government, lower taxes, and creating a business-friendly environment. I am proud to say that today we stand before the people of New Hampshire with a sound plan to return fiscal sanity to this state. Over the past four years, the Democrats went on a spending spree with little regard for the long-term consequences. As a result, according to the Legislative Budget Office, the official scorekeeper of state finances, we are now facing a nearly $1 billion deficit. As many who experienced the previous budget process recall, revenue estimates contained within the governor's budget were artificially inflated. Despite the warnings from Representative Norm Major, one of the most respected voices on state revenues, that a perfect storm was brewing. The revenue figures were accepted, and the budget deficit began spiraling out of control from there. We had the House Finance Chairwoman proclaiming that we must look to the sky when doing revenue estimates because we need more money. On the House floor, the Democratic floor leader even told us that it made sense to know how much we were spending before we decided how much money to raise. When the revenues fell substantially short of their estimates, they resorted to raising more than 100 taxes and fees. When that failed to close the gap, they resorted to accounting gimmicks, downshifting, bonding, and one-time monies to balance the budget. But with the election of a Republican supermajority last November, the days of bogus revenue estimates in an overspending legislature are over.
Just as every family in the state must live within its means, we must set revenue projections in a realistic manner before deciding how much we are going to spend. The families of New Hampshire don't bring a full basket of groceries to the checkout counter and then try to figure out how they're going to spend it or pay for it. They are focused and forced to live within their means. In the state government, we as leaders must lead by example. On November 2nd, Granite Staters were clear and unmistakable in telling the Democrats that they reject their way of budgeting, reject increases in taxes, reject downshifting to their communities, and rejected their fiscal mismanagement. They have entrusted Republicans with the control of the legislature to immediately end out-of-control taxes and spending. I can tell you that we heard the message loud and clear and that we need to be serious and responsible about living up to our promises. We intend to govern as we campaigned. I pledged to you when we announced the Republican House agenda a short time ago that we would first figure out how much we had to spend, and that would be the beginning of the process. Over the past few weeks, our Ways and Means Committee has done just that. We said that we would balance the budget without new taxes or fees, and our Finance Committee will now start to do just that. We also said that we would begin to roll back the cornucopia of tax and fee increases that are burdening our citizens when they can least afford it. And today, we are presenting our plan to do this, and hopefully, as we move forward, we'll be able to do more. Our Finance Committee has a great challenge ahead of it. There's no mistake about that. It is, going, it is not going to be easy to repair the damage of four years of overspending and a balanced budget without accounting gimmicks or additional borrowing. House Finance knows exactly what they have to spend, and they know they have the full support of a Republican majority that was sent here in overwhelming numbers to fix the problems. We know that we will be judged by our constituents on our ability to get our fiscal house in order and return New Hampshire to its tradition of keeping taxes low and not raising them. We welcome that challenge. The responsibility is ours to balance this budget without new taxes and using real revenue estimates that will not require a fix a few years from now. We are ready to accept this task head on. Since the day after the election, this has been our top priority, and we will stay focused on it until we get the job done. I, too, applaud the work of the House Finance and Ways, Commit Ways and Means Committee, and I look forward to working closely with them as we move forward in this process. With that, I would like to turn this over to Steve Stepanek, our Chairman of Ways and Means, who has worked hard and led the effort to put these estimates together. Thank you. DJ, and thank you, uh, Speaker O'Brien. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank all the members of Ways and Means. Uh, they have worked tirelessly over the last month. We have started this process by going out and, and reaching out to experts and economists uh, throughout the region and uh, to get the latest information on what was going on with the economy. We went through a strenuous process of listening to all the state agencies very early on in the session. We have asked a lot of our members and they have delivered. We knew that our job to begin this process was to begin this process and we needed to get the work done before finance could start their job. From the beginning, our committee understood the need to come up with reliable numbers that wouldn't leave the state in the same situation we found ourselves in recent years of having revenue projections that consistently came in above the actual numbers. We believe we have come up with what I like to call Goldilocks numbers. They're not too high, they're not too low, they're just right. <laughs> we began this task with a clear sense that res responsible budgeting depends on accurate revenues, not a wish list. That's why we engaged in an extensive review of the projections from the state agencies and worked hard to have them commit to real numbers, not inflated numbers and not lowball numbers. 
The revenue figures you see before you are the result of that hard work. We understood that we were operating on a tight deadline. We were able to give the Finance Committee as much time as possible to start what will be an enormous task to balance our budget. I can tell you that we have not included the types of accounting gimmicks for revenues that we have seen in past years, such as asset sales or accounting on federal funds that have not been approved. This is an open, honest estimate that our committee knows that we can stand behind with confidence. One of our charges was to work within the existing law and not what was hoped for or projected down the road. I want to again thank our committee for their work, and in particular my Vice Chairman, Norm Major, who probably knows more about revenue estimates than anyone in the state. You have my internal gratitude, all of you, and with that, I would like to offer them a round of applause. And they will This has been a full-time job for the last five weeks. We've been meeting five and six days a week, so it's been a lot of hard work, and we've been very focused on it. And I want to now turn this over to Chairman Weiler. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to thank my colleagues on Ways and Means for their detailed work. Very important that we have a number to start with. Before we have a spending plan, we have to have an income plan. So now we have it. Um, we, know that we knew that starting out that the projections would be somewhat lower and not very rosy and optimistic because that's the way the economy has gone for the last few years. And we need a recognition of that. It'll be a historic time to try to balance this budget. I'm pleased with the team that we do have on the Finance Committee, and I'm pleased that all the people that are working with us. I think this is a recognition unparalleled in history by both the public, the commissioners, and many of the state employees that changes must be made, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, we're going to keep working. We started early on. We've, we've interviewed all these agencies and will continue to do so to see what they have come up with for suggestions how they can become more efficient and things that uh, don't need to be done perhaps by three and four agencies could be done by one. So these are areas we're going to work in. Um, now that we have the revenue figures, we're going to go forward and, and we know what our work will be. The next step will be to see what the governor has in his suggestions and then we'll get serious with that bill when that comes before us. The Ways and Means Committee has done their part. We have been working at this for months. Uh, I myself went away to a couple of uh, forums in December to talk with other states about what things they were all proposing to doing, and I was happy to find out that we weren't as bad off as many of them, but that still doesn't mean we have a record challenge. So I'm pleased with the team I have, my Vice Chairman Lynn Ober, uh, Bill Belvin, Will Smith, and of course Neil Kirk. All these people have experience at, at making budgets work, and so we will make this budget work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, and, and we would uh, welcome your questions. Yeah, I have a question about tax cuts. About $1.6 million in tax cuts is proposed in the package here. That's correct. Uh, about $200 million in tax cuts that are in bills for the legislature. What's the plan on those tax cuts? Our, our plan is to look at those and judge them on their merits, and, and um, to the extent that they are judged meritorious, uh, and projections would accommodate them, then we would recommend them to the House. And you have eight weeks to do all that. The it's, the it, it, as, as with all cycles, it's a front-loaded process. Okay. So how, how immutable are these numbers? I mean, these are going to be the numbers that are going to be the House's position throughout this process, or when, once you know, as more information comes in, maybe something changes. They, they, they are the stake in the ground, Josh. They're, they're where we're going. Um, and so these, these numbers uh, represent the cap. If projections uh, uh, in, in future months show revenue trailing off, then we're going to budget to reality. It will be a lower figure. But the budget we put together will not be higher than the budget, uh, the figures that we're giving you. 
uh, and uh, we look forward to working with the Senate as to uh, the, the spending priorities within that limit. Representative Stefanak, I was wondering if you could maybe explain a little bit more about why the committee um, figures are lower than the agency figures, and particularly what exactly are these line items, the school building aid and the Certainly. Uh, there's, there's three main areas that, that uh, there were disagreements in. Under rooms and meals, uh, we had a difference of $41.3 million, and this was primarily made up of the fact that we were charged with coming up with a revenue number for unrestricted general funds. And when the Democrats passed the bonding of school building aid, the way they funded that is that they are taking money from rooms and meals to pay the principal and interest and putting it into restricted revenue. So we, the agencies used it, put the restricted revenue numbers into their figures. We had to take them out. So that's going into a restricted fund to pay that. So we didn't have the option of using that for the unrestricted funds. Uh, the second area that we disagreed with was uh, the uh, real estate transfer tax. We came in $11.2 million lower than them, and that was uh, primarily because of the information that we felt the real estate market was still trending down, and we didn't anticipate that there was going to be a significant increase in that. And finally, uh, the third area, significant area of disagreement was with the Liquor Commission. Uh, they had projected an $8.3 million uh, increase in revenue, uh, which was primarily based on them renovating the two liquor stores on I-93 and the added uh, revenue that they would get from them. We felt that it was, we could not, although we strongly support that position and we support that number, we felt that we could not include that in our numbers because that funding has not been yet approved. So that's not something that we can go out and say, yes, we're going to add that to our numbers because it hasn't been passed. If it doesn't pass, those numbers don't don't become real. So that accounts for probably almost $61 million of the, of the $66 million difference. So if you, excuse me for one more minute, uh, if you get numbers in March before you put the budget to bed to show that the trend is actually a little better, the economy is a little better, you're not going to increase these numbers. You're going to budget to these numbers and use whatever increases for tax reductions. Is that correct? No, okay. As investments in the rainy day fund or tax decreases, that is correct. One point I want to make on the agency estimates compared to the committee estimates is how remarkably close they are. Um, they're within uh, or just a little over one percent different between the two estimates. The committee estimates reflect reality and it would be proper for us to go back to the people of New Hampshire and the businesses in New Hampshire and say, we want to spend more now, we're going to tax you more. That's the stake in the ground, is, is the committee estimates. And, uh, but if the Senate has a different philosophy and they say, our stake in the ground quite isn't we're your stake in the ground, we're going to spend more money than the Now, that's a hypothetical situation that uh, will very unlikely um, be reflected in reality because we are in constant communication with the Senate. The Senate knows what we're, going, what we're doing. We've previewed uh, these figures and the positions uh, were taken with the um, Senate. As, as a matter of fact, the conversations between the Senate President and myself now stretch back to before, uh, reorganiz uh, before organization day. Um, as to how we are going to budget, and uh, I, I think he uh, uh, he understands and he joins in the fact that we have to have budgetary discipline here, and this is the best way to achieve it. Mr. Speaker, we want to offer one more. Senate President has agreed Last with these question. numbers, and these are the numbers that he'll stick with. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't asked, uh, or no one's asked them to agree to these numbers. That would be unfair. They haven't uh, gone through the same process that we have. What they um, uh, are, uh, in, in my understanding very willing to do is to join with us in achieving the budgetary discipline that is reflected in adopting these realistic figures and then making sure that we don't have to go back to the people of New Hampshire and businesses in New Hampshire uh, for uh, tax and fee increases. Thank you. 
We want to allow the members who have to get to hearings to grab some lunch, so we're going to wrap this up. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.